Okay, first things first, let's talk about archiving projects. Here I am in this song. I can't see the whole song. Hmm. If I come to the upper right-hand corner here, there are these two buttons. These two buttons are pretty cool. Basically what they do is they auto-zoom horizontally and vertically. So there's vertical, there's horizontal. And as you add tracks and things, it will try to keep them all within the screen, which is pretty darn cool. So that was incorporated into 10.3, I believe, this, this uh, vertical zoom. And then the vertical and horizontal, having both of them at the same time, is pretty slick. So here I've got this song. Uh, you'll note that my tracks are colored and everything's named, which is very, very good. Anybody who's watched my earlier videos know that I'm kind of a stickler about that. If you want to name things really quickly and easily, just hit Shift Return, and that will highlight the name. You can type the new name and then hit Tab and go to the next one. Take the time to do it, because when you have a song that's this big, it's going to help you down the line. Now, the song looks pretty innocuous right now. It doesn't look that huge, but if I was to come over here, I see that I have the, all these track stacks in my track list here. To open a track stack and close a track stack, now you can use the key command, command, control, right arrow, and command, control, left arrow. I'm using that all the time. If you want to see what's really going on in this piece of music, you can hold Option and come over here to the track stack and open it up, which will show you absolutely everything from all of the live brass parts to the live string parts to all the multitudes of vocals <laughs> that have been layered and layered and layered. And you can see that this track is huge. So archiving this track in the past would be a huge pain because I'd have to go through and make sure to name things and do them in groups. And I would usually give them like underscores and alphabetical titles because I want to make sure to keep the sort of hierarchy of everything together. Well, the new way that we have to export these things is much easier. If we go to File, you can export your tracks from here under the Export menu under All Tracks is Audio Files. I click on that and I give them this menu. You'll see that I already have an archive folder. And I do have my stems in there. And you note that the track number is actually at the beginning of every stem, which is amazing. Really, really good stuff. So check it out. Some of the new things we have. Range, trim silence at file end, export cycle range only. It's good if you're doing loops things like games, extend file length to project end. So if you need all of these audio files for every track to be exactly the same length, that's really, really good. And I work in games and that alone, this is worth its weight in gold. Really great stuff because I can create stems for a piece of music that's going into a game. And I know that every stem, if I was to put it in an implementation software, they would all loop correctly. They'd be exactly the same length, which is nice. The multi-output software instruments we had before and normalized we had before, of course, you probably don't ever want to turn that on if you're archiving your project. But the big deal is this element section down below. So they have this thing called Pattern, Elements, and Custom. Under Pattern, you can take these elements and you can drag them away or you can delete them. And you'll note that at the bottom, File Name Example, this is the first track that I have in there called New Bass. What I can do is I can take the track number and drag that up in front. There's my track number. Now I want to have an underscore in between those, so I can just click between them. And if I just tap underscore, you'll note that the underscore shows up. That counts as a custom. We have all kinds of cool stuff. We have project name, so we might put that after the track name. I like to do that because in other programs, I can drag my custom up here and then type the custom right there. Having the project name after the name of the instrument is important to me because usually if you drag something into a DAW and the name is too long, they go for the first letters and the first words that are in the title. So this is cool. Now what's beautiful about this is when I export these stems, they're all going to be in order. They're going to be in the track order, just like I saw them in my session, which means if I threw them in Pro Tools or anything else, everything's going to be organized the way that I had it organized. And I go to painstaking lengths to make sure that everything is organized. 
So that's really cool. One fail swoop, the entire archive is created, which is amazing. So there you go. That's the new export option in Logic. One additional note is that on my track stacks, I usually put an underscore before the title. Um, that gives me a cue. This, this archive is going to have not only the track stack sum, but all of the individual elements of the track stack. And if I hand this over to somebody, I can say, hey, if you see an underscore at the title of the name, you'll know that it's a track stack. Whereas if they didn't have that, you know, I hope that you had some other naming convention that made sense. <laughs> all right. So that's pretty cool. Now, the next thing I'd like to go over, I'd like to talk a little bit about panning. The panning system in Logic 10.3 is really awesome. And I wanted to kind of demystify it for you. 